Tamara. <laughs> and so tell me your fiber story. Okay. Well, my daughter is 17, mm -hmm. but shortly after she was born, I was, um, you know, I was dealing with that whole postpartum thing. Mm -hmm. And I really needed something that I could do mm -hmm. and have done. I think anybody who's raised kids knows the work is literally never, ever, ever done. Uh -huh. And I always loved working with yarn, but nobody ever taught me how to crochet or knit. Uh -huh. Literally, all I could do was make those long finger knit stripes. Uh -huh. Like, you know, just like long chain, basically. Long chains. Yeah. all I knew how to do. Yeah. Finally, she was about six months old or so, give or take. I don't remember. She was a baby. Yeah. It's all very fuzzy. But I finally um, found somebody who just showed me how to, like, chain and single crochet. Yeah. Once I had somebody show me in person, I was off and running. I loved it. So I did it as a hobby for a long time, and it really gave me that sense of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always say I'm a project crocheter, not a process crocheter, mm. because my favorite part was at the end of the day, the house, you know, I may have cleaned it three times, and it was still a mess, there was another meal to cook, another diaper to change, but I had finished something, something that was completely done. It wasn't laundry that was gonna get dirty again, it was done, it was something I could show that I had finished and made, and that really gave me the boost I needed to get me out of that funk. And um, so I just took off from there and I just sort of was doing it as a hobby. And then two more kids later, my youngest was going off to preschool and I had to start contributing to the household as more than a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. um, but my middle child has a congenital heart defect. Mm. So I didn't want to go back to work and risk not being able, you know, basically having to quit and having to call out all the time for doctor's right. appointments and things. I needed something I could do from home. So I started making things to sell the finished items. Um, but they were, they were mostly from my own designs. And so then I had crocheters saying, it's really great, but I crochet, I don't, you know, want to buy your finished baby blanket, would you mind sharing the pattern? Yeah. And my husband worked in the TV industry, mm -hmm. so he was like, you know, there's this whole, you know, ad model, which I felt good about because I had no idea what I was doing when I started actually writing out the patterns. Yeah. I thought, well, if they're free, you get what you pay for. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. You can say, well, I didn't pay anything for it or give me yeah. the feedback. Let me fix it. You know, I'm, I can learn at the same time, you mm -hmm. know, through this model. And it just kind of took off from there. So the ad model being, it's like a, bl a blog, right? Yeah, it's, it's a blog, but with ads on it. And mm -hmm. so everything, all the content's on it's free. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's fun. I like it that way. Um, you know, like I say, if I mean I made a mistake, which I do all the time, I'm totally human, you know, yeah. it's not a big deal. I can go back and fix it. Yeah. Okay, like, hey, everybody, sorry. Edited. Yeah, <laughs> and so you just started putting out patterns. I did, yeah. Well, like I said, I was initially, they were kind of the patterns for the things I was making. But what I loved about the patterns, um, once I got the hang of, you know, writing it out in words, uh, was that it was something different every time. Mm. And when I was making the finished items, I was making the same few things like over and over again. Mm. I had this, um, it's the Blackberry Salad Stitch Baby Blanket that's now a free pattern on Moobly, which a lot of people like making. And it sells really well. I know it sells really well because I was making blanket after blanket after blanket. Yeah. And it was just bobbles, bobbles, bobbles yeah. all the time. And it was great. It was a good income. It went really well. But I got really sick of making that blanket over and over yeah. again. I wanted to make something different all the time. Yeah. So to get out of that, that's what I loved about designing. I get to always make something different every time. Yeah. I never make the same thing twice, or rarely. So you were actually making finished objects? Mm -hmm. I think I missed that part. Yeah, sorry, I may have skipped over it. Yeah, I yeah. started out making finished objects, but yeah. so many people wanted the patterns. Right. I thought, okay, I'll start sharing the patterns this other way for the crocheters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it just took off. So now, is it knitting too on your...? A little bit. Um, I have like nine knitting patterns and I don't have any videos. Uh, I have one project knitting video, but I'm hoping to start a how to knit series soon because I do have people asking for it. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I'm hoping it will be valuable coming from the perspective of someone who did crochet first. Yes. You know, I mean, I think there's a different process when you learn one and then the other. I think you so know? too. Yeah, just the things, the little differences you might not be aware of, like the yarn over is going a different direction and everything. Yeah. I really, really struggled to learn to crochet. Yeah. Because I had come from a knitting background and I would just sort of... Mm, yeah, that's just, how I felt about knitting at first too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I thought, I'll never crochet. Yeah. And then I was just determined to learn it one day and finally got it. And I think, actually, it helps me to become a different knitter. Like, I was a mm. thrower and now I'm a picker. And I think I can yeah. pick because I'm kind of used to that crochet. That's interesting because I'm a thrower. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I crocheted first, I don't know what it is. So it's weird. I can I can do the knitting 
you know, picking. But yeah, the yeah. purling, I can't. Yeah, and, and I then, cannot pick the purl yeah. either. Okay, and so because once I once I switch back and I throw for the purl, and then I go back to the knitting, I I'm throwing again. Yeah. So I just stick with it. <laughs> and so it's been 15, 17 years now. Yeah. Of I made her. I made her yeah. too, the baby, but she was just six months. Yeah. And or approximately, again, very yeah. fuzzy period of time. And did you have any friends or? family members who were doing it or this just yeah, came well, from where it was um actually my sister-in-law mm -hmm. my brand new sister-in-law mm -hmm. so you know we were just getting to know each other and she mentioned oh she crochets she's actually made my daughter a baby blanket mm -hmm. and i was like oh, mm -hmm. oh i finally know somebody <laughs> all right sweet i've been trying to learn from pamphlets i had mm -hmm. tried before and i wish i could find one of the things i made when i tried to learn from a pamphlet i actually <laughs> saved it and gave it to my daughter as a baby blanket to use for her baby dolls mm -hmm. um but it was terrible mm -hmm. it was terrible First of all, I tried to learn to crochet with a boucle yarn mm, no. and a Tunisian hook. No, no, Completely no. the wrong size. I had no <laughs> idea. I was, you know, I was standing there in the, the store, you know, big box, everything yeah. store going, you know, what do I get? Yeah. Well, this yarn's pretty. This hook's longer than the others. Yeah. I'll get this one. Wrong choices. Wrong choices <gasps> all around. It was terrible. It looks more like a, um, ironically, because it was like a J hook and anybody, you know, J hook was, this should have been tight. I don't know how, I don't know what I was doing. It looked, it looked like a fishnet. Like you could literally like take it out into the ocean and catch fish in it. Except it was 12 by 12. So, very small fish. <laughs> I love that you're like, longer is better. Yeah, you know, it was, it you know, must be better. It was preposterous. It was the ugliest, oddest thing, but. I taught cro some knitters how to crochet this past year and some of them kind of started casting on on their hook. Oh like, yeah. No, we're just one stitch at a time, most of the right. time. Now, where are you from? Um, I'm originally from um, the out in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, mm -hmm. Sterling Dixon Rock Falls area, if anybody knows where that is. Mm -hmm. um, grew up out in the country, mm -hmm. and now I live in Iowa. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so what's the scene like in Iowa? Because I've been to the second best yarn shop in Iowa. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Which one? Well, there's a... There's a Big billboard on the highway oh, that yeah. says "Come to the second yeah. best yarn shop." And I, yeah. when you ask them about it, they say, "Well, we thought that the, you know, the best mm -hmm. wouldn't get any customers, but oh, the second funny. best draws you in." That's funny. I haven't seen that one. No. I pulled off the road and went. Yeah. Oh, I would too. Um, no, unfortunately, the one little yarn store we or local yarn store. Funny story about that. But anyway, the one uh, local yarn store we had has closed down. So. Michael's, Joanne's, mm -hmm. Hobby Lobby, that's all I've got that's at home, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And do you have knitting groups or crochet groups now? Or is um, it... There's, I, I don't go to any myself, um, just because that's, in the evening is actually the time when I do all my designing. Mm. So, and that's for me a real concentration activity. Mm -hmm. um, but I I know there's there's actually a really cute store in Davenport, Iowa, if you ever find yourself there, called Crafted QC. And they sell a bunch of really awesome handmade things, but they also do classes. Cool. So they, um, and classes and knit nights and crochet nights and all that stuff. And um, they used to have a lady who came in and did string art classes, which was really cool. And she was a lot of fun. Is so. that with, like, when you do the hammers? Yeah, and she oh, does the nails. Nice. She's got all kinds of skit, uh, kits now that she sells, yeah. strung by Shauna. She's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So tell us if we were to go to Moogly, what would we find? Because our interview is a day early, and yes. I confess, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to study up like I normally like to. So yeah. can you just tell us what sure. we find when we go there? Um, well, it depends what day of the week it is. But yeah. uh, um, usually, and it's been weird lately, there's been some other like little crochet alongs and things that I've participated in that have shifted around. But generally speaking, Mondays are going to be a giveaway. Okay. Um, sometimes for yarn, or it might be a book, or any, you know, project bag. It's always something different. Um, and then Tuesday's a little bit of a mixed bag. I've got a link party happening sometimes. Ooh, what's a link party? Okay, so if you have a blog, you can go to a link party and drop a picture, well, mine anyway, you can drop a picture of the project that you've make, most recently made, or maybe the pattern, and the link. And then everybody else who visits the link party, including yourself, should click on the other things you like. And then the things that are most popular get featured on the next party and you get a chance to enter again. Okay. So it's just kind of a chance to get featured on Moogly and also my partner, uh, Puddles to Picos. We run the same link party. So if you get featured on that, then you're featured on both our blogs. 
Do you have an app to help you with that? Because that sounds like organizational <laughs> help to me. Yeah, no, there's a there's a whole program um, I use. It's uh, what's called Inlinks. That's so cool. Yeah, Inlinks. It just makes all the code for me. You put in like how often you want it to run and when it ends, and drop the code into the blog. What a fun idea! Yeah, it's fun. It is fun. It gets people a chance to you know, get seen, um, the readers love it because, you know, it's different stuff and yeah. it's one of those things I always say, nobody, you know, makes the patterns from just one designer. Yes. You know, you want to be able to hop around and try other things. So, um, sharing, you know, what other people are doing, I think is inspiring for everybody. When all, when the water rises. Yes. All absolutely. the boats rise. Okay. Absolutely. I've always what, believed that. What happens on Wednesday? Oh, so Wednesdays are usually a video day. Mm -hmm. So it might be a video tutorial. Um, last Wednesday of the month, I usually go live, and I'll do a Facebook live in the morning and a YouTube live in the afternoon. Um, I love this. <laughs> and then Thursdays is so Tuesdays and Thursdays are the funky days. Mm -hmm. Thursdays are usually a um, well, I shouldn't say usually. Every other Thursday mm -hmm. is a crochet along square. Mm -hmm. I have a year long crochet along that goes all year. It's been going since 2012, 2012, wow. 2014. I'd have to go back and look myself now. So you have to come up with a new square. No, I don't. That's the fun of it. That's another opportunity to try all these other people's patterns. Oh. I have 24 other designers Got design it. a square. They host the square on their site. So that's still their pattern. They own the pattern. Mm -hmm. But I make it up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And in my colors, I always have a different colorway theme every year. For the, okay. So, for so like, you can draw from like yes. five colors or wherever. Right. However well, many. everybody else can use whatever colors they want. Yeah, want. anything. That's, yeah. It's really a free-for-all. So I make up my square ahead of time so I can show how I interpreted their yeah. pattern, show their pattern, I share my notes, um, you know, if I had to make an adjustment for gauge yeah. or something, and then I link up to their pattern, they can go follow that. But I kind of yeah. gather it all together for the year. Okay, and then Friday? And then Friday is usually a brand new free pattern for me. Amazing. Every Friday? Three of the month. Um, the fourth one, I try and do a Cricut project, What's, just to mix it up. What's Cricut? Okay, so Cricut is, um, it's basically a big cutting machine. Oh, it's not even that big. It's like oh, I was thinking, bread I, I, I pronounced that cry cut. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I used to think so too. It's and cricket. I met the lady from Cricket, and I was like, oh, I love the cry cut, and she's like, it's Cricket. <laughs> okay. I thought it was cry so, cut too. I did. <laughs> oh, that's where you lost me. Okay, so Cricket. Yeah. Okay, so it's paper. Same thing. It's um, I've got the Cricut Maker, which can do paper. Um, gosh, all the kinds of paper: chipboard, basswood, vellum, um, fabric. There's a rotary wheel, so like if you quilt. Talk about precise cuts. Right. I mean, you're literally putting this in your computer. I want a three by three inch square, and it will cut a three by three inch square for you. Cricket. Like, perfect. <laughs> That's so I mean, I wouldn't about quilting is the cutting. Exactly. I would. I would. I never considered quilting before I got this machine, and then I was like, okay, now I could do it. Yes. Because cutting out all piecing. Ooh. Yes. Okay. So yeah. You do That's a fun. Cricut project on Friday. I try to do a Cricut project once a month. It doesn't always happen, but it's, I try to. It's like. Um, when you're training for something and you cross train, yes, yes, you just well, have a little something thrown and in I there. And I try and bring it together too. Like um, I've got different projects, like how to make a suede label that you can sew onto your crochet items. Yeah. Or you know, one that looks like chalkboard that you could. I did one that looked like a sort of like a chalkboard that you could put on like a basket, yeah. a crocheted basket. So I try and combine it. Um, like in fact, if you are crocheting or knitting for that matter with wool or cotton, you could do an iron on. Right. You can iron right on the fabric. Just put so. something on. And I think that's on your Instagram today. It looked like there was a little heart patch ironed on something. That is actually, it's not an iron on. That was a completely different project. What was that? <laughs> okay. So, leave Look your... how excited she <laughs> is. Know. This was so fun. This was, this was so much fun. You. This was, um, Leisure Arts has these, well, Diamond Art or Diamond Dots. I don't know if you've heard of these. Uh -huh. Okay. They're, um, kits. It's sort of a mix. How am I describing it? It's a mix of like cross stitch and mm. stitch stickers, but with jewels. So basically, <gasps> if you've seen cross stitch um, yes. patterns, yes. you know, there's all those little symbols. Yes. Or like paint by number, maybe yeah, paint sure. by number, same thing. There's this area on a canvas or a paper, whatever, with a symbol, mm -hmm. and it's a little grid. And then you've got all these tiny little, um, I think they're resin gems, essentially, mm -hmm. little plastic gems with facets, they mm -hmm. sparkle. And you use this little tool that's included with the kits, and um, you dab it in wax, that makes it just a little bit sticky, pick up the gem, and put it on the fabric, which is sticky, just where the gems go. Okay. And then, once you've got them all on there, roll a rolling pin over it to set them real well, and they're set oh, on the fabric. Wow. So you've got this sparkly fabric. So the first one I did, I just put in a frame and hung yeah. up, because it was really pretty. But today's project, 
I actually punched holes because the fabric itself is a really heavy canvas. Mm -hmm. I punched holes in the fabric and crocheted into the fabric. And so I built a tote bag around the fabric piece. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> that is so cool. It was a lot of fun to make. It was really different. And so this is such creative out put from you did you do something creative before the crochet came into your life have you always been I've always been kind of crafty I've really yeah. enjoyed it but I hadn't found you know one mm -hmm. like I tried I did counted cross stitch yeah um and of course I jumped right into a giant project so by the time I finished it I was done yeah um, you know right off the bat you know yeah. the big multicolor C scene yeah. um but yeah I've always been making something I used to do mountain pour soap um, I did a lot of sewing, mm. you know, with the machine. Just made a lot of my daughter's clothes when she was real little. But this is it for you. Yeah, I think, I think so. I mean, I don't know. There's always something new to try. Yeah, but you're just yeah. so passionate about it. I love it. I love the possibilities. I mean, there's so many things you can combine with yarn. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love. You know, like I said, I do the Cricut, the Diamond Dots. It's fun. Yeah. But I like to be able to mix it up. Yeah. Yeah. What is, or why is it called Moogly? Okay. <laughs> This is a fun story. So, when said daughter again, she's getting so much airtime tonight. Um, hey, girl. <laughs> I know. Hi, Riley. Um, so, yeah, when um, she was real little, um, you know, I knew how come, kind of kids come up with their own words for stuff sometimes. Yes. Anytime she stepped on something that was wobbly or even that would rock back and forth, she'd go, Ooh, it's so moogly. And we had no <laughs> idea where she came up with this word. Um, but we, it was real cute, you know, so it kind of became a family word, you know, so we were all using like, oh, this feels real moogly or whatever. I love that. And so then when I started the blog, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. So I was like, this feels real moogly. This feels real moogly. Yeah. So that's what I called it. I love that. That is such a great story. Thank you. I love too when kids say things in the wrong way because they're yeah. trying to, they're like trying out words mm -hmm. or attitudes. Like my two year old, I think she was two, she was looking out the window and she's like, mom, Look at all those cars out there, don't ya? <laughs> I'm like, mm, that's mm, close. Yeah, but close. just try yeah. trying that on. You yeah, know, like she's got conversational the attitude, right? with me. You know, yeah. it's like, don't ya? Yeah. Okay, cute. So Aww. funny. <laughs> um, okay, so what? I, I want to wrap up because okay. we we are so. I'm tired. It's you like, don't seem tired. It's like ten o'clock at night. But I'm I'm. It's eleven for me. Oh, is it? I'm oh. I'm New York, but. And you know, I have a 17 year old too, so I go to bed early. A 17 year old and a two year old? I, well, she was two. What, they were okay. two at one point. Okay. I was like, oh my gosh. No, but I have a six year old. Oh, are you still awake? I have a six year old. Oh That's pretty good. Yeah, that is good. But I just want to say, what is the best thing about crochet? Because there's sometimes been, like, at least when I started to crochet, mm -hmm. I noticed there was like a divide Absolutely. or something weird. Yeah, it is unfortunate. You feel that too? Absolutely. And right. it is really unfortunate because I think they are so complementary. Knitting, knitting can do a lot for crochet, and crochet can do a lot, a lot for knitting. I agree. When I did Knit Stars 2.0, mm. I was able to come on as, and of course they didn't have me come and teach knitting, <laughs> I went on and taught crochet for knitters. Mm. And that was my favorite thing was saying, look, you've got, you've knit all this up. And this neckline is too big or wide. All you need is a simple, I mean, literally one round of crochet. Yes. You can tighten that up with like that. Yes. Um, there's just so many little fixes like that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can use a crochet hook to pick up your dropped stitches, you can crochet. Totally. You know, and, but my favorite thing about crochet is just the versatility and the ability to change it on a whim mm -hmm. and change it halfway through. Like I've got a few knitting designs and I do enjoy knitting, but what I I, you know, I don't want to downplay anything, but what I don't like about it is that you really have to think it through ahead of time and have a plan. Like all those kind of stitches either have to be there or you have to have a way to get them. Mm -hmm. And working that one stitch at a time, if I want to say, this is really cool, but now I need to head off in that direction, mm -hmm. no big deal. I don't have to bind anything off. I don't have to worry about picking right. up stitches. I just, just go. Slip stitch on over yep. if you're on the yep. wrong Whatever side. Whatever I want to do. Yeah. 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 So I, that's I, what I, I do like. like that too. Yeah. I feel like I can be more free form with crochet. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think um, working with crocheters is really fun because um, just something I've noticed is that knitters tend to follow the pattern more mm -hmm. and crocheters tend to say, this was such a cool pattern, I did this with it. And yes. they, you know, they took off in a different direction and I love that. I yeah. love that people are so, it's it just seems so much easier to customize. Mm -hmm. They can really make it what they want, take the parts they like, combine it with that, this, the other, and really make something just for them. I love that. Yeah. Well, under this video, I'm going to put links to what we talked about. Do you also have a podcast? I don't have a podcast. Okay. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Okay, so you do have a YouTube channel. <laughs> yes. Is that where the videos 
the Help videos them. yeah they're hosted on youtube i also um if there's usually um there should always be a link to the vlog underneath each video each video uh -huh. on youtube and when you go there that's where all like the rest of the links are so they like compliment they each definitely other. they're embedded there too um like now i didn't start out doing this and i'm trying to go back and fix it but i always do right and left-handed videos oh. so if you need one or the other you can just go to that link and they'll both be there as well as the link to the written pattern if that's referenced the yarn the hook the needle whatever else is in it so you can left-handed crochet too no that's called video editing Reverse it. <laughs> All you have to do is flip that part of the video. It's the exact same thing. Moogly. That's yes. so I can I know, so about that. <laughs> That's so tricky. It's the same thing. You just flip the video. Oh, and, it, and, and people respond to it. They, oh, it helps it them. works. Yeah, it works. It's the, it is literally the. I mean, that's all it. That's amazing. Yeah, I wish I could crochet left handed, right? but. Alas. I've well, been... that's amazing. Oh, I sorry. am so happy to have you here. I love your energy, Thank especially because I'm feeling a little tired today. But as a person who knits and crochets, mm -hmm. I really love that we can focus on this in this month and hopefully yes. maybe bring someone over yes. to the crochet side. Yes. Try it. And crocheters, try knitting. I know yeah. it's frustrating. Don't get me wrong. I threw mine across the room <laughs> multiple times when I was learning. But I think it's like any of these skills, you know, once you, once it clicks, yes, it starts clicking. Give it a chance. We saw people learn how to knit tonight. You did? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like there crocheters? There were people literally, like, yes, crocheters. I saw at least two crocheters sit down and learn how to knit tonight. We're at Stitch Up Chicago in case yes. you're wondering. That is so cool. Yes. Now, do you also on your website have a place where people can see you live and in person? Um, well, I do the live YouTube and Facebook videos. Right. Um, but um, anytime I go to an event, I, you know, try and talk about it in my newsletter especially. Newsletter. Yeah. Good. My newsletter is always a good, good opportunity to find out where I'm going. Do your kids crochet? I have. Actually, my youngest, um, he's about to turn 12 and he can change. There you go. And the middle one can finger crochet. Mm -hmm. And my daughter has decided mom can make her everything she wants. Yep, I get that. <laughs> I get that. That so, yeah. sounds about right yep. for 17. Yeah, she does other stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having and me. And I'd love to have you another time. Absolutely. We have more energy and time. When we're awake. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.